Welcome to the Flatland Wells Garden Railway at the Dalhouse B&B in Malvern Wells, Worcestershire. My name's Kevin. The aim of this video is to share with you my experience of making uh, concrete models through making a rubber uh, mould and casting concrete models for the Garden Railway. The Garden Railway is 16 millimetres to one foot scale. It's a 60 metre circuit on a block concrete uh, track bed. So it's basically at ground level, but one or two blocks above the ground according to the, the contours of the ground. The two models I've got on the go so far, one is a section of Mormon stone walling, the, the local style of stone walling and uh, with, with a very distinctive capping to it. The other is a section of uh, block uh, wall which I should be using to cover the uh, the one-to-one -one blocks uh, at the side of the, um, of the railway track bed. In both cases they will also provide a, a barrier to keep the, uh, the ballast on top of the block work. I'm about to start a third model and that's going to be the topic of this video. Uh, that I, again is another wall. Its uh, purpose is the same as the block walling, but it's going to be twice the length and uh, only half the height for those sections of the track bed where it's only one block above the ground level. And really, I wanted to get along further uh, than I was getting along with the, uh, the the shorter section. Okay, so here we are inside the workshop now. First thing I want to take you through is really the, the overall process that I've been using to make the, the various casts. Uh, first off, you need some form of master. This is the remnants of the, the wall master. The, you'll then need some form of box around that. So you put the master in the box, cut the box up, and then You'll pour the, the rubber mix into this box and then that will form the actual mould. Okay, a couple of days later the rubber has now cured and so now we need to get this whole assembly out of the outer mould. And that's straightforward. Extract the mould from the rubber and you've now got your rubber mould. Now this is really quite tough stuff. The, um, when you come to use this you'll be putting that back into the frame, Put the frame back together again. So the first thing to note is that this wooden outer frame is not a temporary thing, it's going to be used when you actually pour the concrete because the it's a bit of a trade-off. You can either make the, the rubber um, sufficiently thick at the edges so that it doesn't flex, or you just rely on having something else to, to hold it steady, because the it will flex reasonably well at the edges. Now, a bit of a word about the masters. The, I, the original mo model that I used to cast the rubber to then cast the concrete. The first one I did, uh, which is for the wall, because the, the wall, uh, the wall, the wall um, sections were what I wanted to get going on on the railway because uh, I've got, I'm going to need a lot of these. Now, in hindsight, um, I was well, the experience of having now done a couple more of these, the, um, this is completely the wrong shape to be trying to mould anything useful. So, because uh, it's long, it's deep and uh, it's yeah, relatively delicate. So anyway, for this one I used um, an air drying clay to actually make a model. I mean, it's actually just like this, but in clay. And um, fitted that into the, into the framework and clamped it up and poured the rubber one. Uh, Getting the master out of the rubber was a totally destructive event. The, um, 
I, I mean, with no experience at all, I had no idea quite how rigid this rubber was going to be, and especially as I'd followed the sort of advice on other YouTube videos that you, you needed like an inch um, uh, surround around the, uh, well, you know, that's a bit wild, okay, I'll, I'll give it an inch on the ends, but, you know, maybe just a centimetre down the sides. Uh, and that made the whole thing absolutely rock hard, yeah. This is not, not delicate stuff. So, first thing I had to do was actually just cut down the ends so that I could get the mould out at all, the, the master out at all. Um, the master basically was just uh, a pile of bits of clay by the time I finished. Uh, and um, for, for quite a few castings after that, I did kept, just keep it with the, uh, the two slits at the two ends so that I could then fold the, uh, the rubber away from the concrete. Uh, and that worked okay, but it wasn't entirely reliable. So what I've ended up doing actually is cutting the full length, but I've now got a two-part mould. That's working pretty well. You do get a little bit of flashing. Uh, there's much on this one. Uh, yeah, there's a little bit of flashing on, on one and two this week. And, uh, but basically in concrete, this is not an issue. So, things to learn. This is very tough, pretty flexible it, and on the basis that you are going to keep hold of the wooden frame, it doesn't need to be that rigid. Rigidity is good from the point of view of having a consistent cast, but it's the right pain from the point of view of getting the cast out of the rubber at the end of the day. Now for the the vertical wall section, uh, slightly different set of problems here. The um, likely uh, delicacy of the the slab of concrete is, was going to be determined by how just how thick it was. I wanted it to be a reasonable block thickness so that this top edge looked like a sensible depth. And so the the whole shape of this is very different. So uh, the um, here, of course, given the outer frame, I could I could now be much more flexible on the edges. Even so, I still cut cut the corners just to make it easier to get the uh, the concrete out of the, the cars at the end of the day. With this one, again, the master was, was semi-destructive. The way that the rubber can get underneath every little nook and cranny uh, is very good from the point of view of producing a nice sharp model, but it's quite destructive if it gets inside any part of your master because when you take the, the bulk of the master up, it will be leaving bits in there, and that's what happened with this one. The other, just passing uh, comment on while I've got this one to hand, is that I deliberately um, had a sort of abutment type element to one end of the, the mould. This is because when it comes to actually putting these out in, in reality, you know perfectly well they're not going to line up perfectly at this end. So rather than having an odd split in the middle of the brickwork, then actually having this, this, this disguises the, the fact that you've got one link to the next on the, uh, when it comes to installing it on the railway. Okay, so it's time to move on to the, uh, the third of our, uh, the, the models I'm making. And this is a longer, shorter, thicker section of walling for uh, sections of the railway where I want to get along a bit quicker than I was getting along with the, the double height wall section uh, for sections where the, the track bed isn't so far off the ground. It also provides a nice sort of edging for uh, some of the, the railway, uh, the, the station areas and so on. The primary reason why it's thicker is because it's longer and I, I need some level of, of strength for what is going to be a concrete slab that's going to be very long and thin. So, the uh, basis, the, the main body of this, this master is a couple of bits of uh, old chipboard, just sort of screwed back to back. It's pretty unimportant to what it is, obviously it's rigid. The, nothing of this is going to be affecting the final 
uh, object at all. The bricks as such are simply sections of a uh, little cut, cut out of old, old flooring. This is in one of our bathrooms. Uh, it's had a nice texture. It's pretty flexible. It's a doddle to cut. If there's one part of the whole process where you want to take your time and get some precision in, and that's you know, for something like a, this brick wall, then take your time getting all the blocks the same size and shape. Um, the, the, the other thing is going to be more irritating, uh, which is somebody like me, that um, if you end up with a casting, and that, well, that, that row of bricks is that little bit shorter than the, the other row of bricks, or that one's a bit off, and yeah, that, that's going to irritate me. So this is where I, I took the time over, getting the, the bricks the right size and shape. The advantage I had, um, sort of a side effect really, is that when I took the master for the other piece of walling, out of the, the rubber. Basically it peeled off all of the bricks. So uh, apart from the pain of having to extract each of those bricks individually out of the, the original master, uh, the, the original mould, then um, there was a quite an advantage that I didn't have a, a fresh stock of ready cut bricks. The blocks were stuck onto the, uh, the chipboard just using uh, uh, a stick. Um, and the, uh, the top section is actually little squares, sort of paving slab sized of um, suitable um, hardboard in this case. And a bit of filler just to be the, the mortar between the, the bricks. And just add a bit of variety into the, the length of the whole thing, then there's one end which is, uh, it's got a I just put in a bit of an arch in here. Uh, I filled that with uh, a section of uh, I think it's brand bright um, brick uh, plastic moulding. One thing to be aware of with the uh, the rubber is that although it ends up very rigid and very uh, rigid but very tough and very very solid, when it's being poured, it is very liquid. It will get into every tiny little corner. That's uh, great from the point of view of picking up the detail. It's capable of getting down behind these blocks if you don't seal the whole thing. Uh, and so it would get underneath these bit uh, paper stabs at the top there. And that's recoverable, but it's a bit of a pain. So you want to seal the whole thing as much as you can. This is why this is black and this is not. Uh, because basically I've gone over it with um, some some old black paint just to uh, and have something else get into all the nooks and crannies behind the, the various blocks that where the, the glue hasn't been completely sort of covering the whole back. What you're going to need to be aware of is the rubber uh, mix is very capable of getting out of even the tiniest split or, or gap around these, these edges. So uh, or no matter how tight you think these are, you will need to seal them. What I have found uh, on the other side is that the, it's, the, the rubber is relatively adhesive. I, I've used a variety of uh, mold release chemicals but none have been terribly successful so the uh, what I found on the last one actually is that um, it separates very easily from cling film so what I should probably do is wrap each of these timbers in cling film uh, I might even um, do the base as well because uh, the base is what's good with the top and that's pretty much irrelevant uh, and um, and then do something like just run a, a, a fillet of silicon around the, the edge of the box just to to really seal it and we are plastic covered and then at the moment these these three are screwed in but they're screwed in from underneath so I can we'll be able to unscrew those later just peel those away and then the uh, the only issue is going to be getting the master out of the rubber. Right now we're approaching the final stage of the mold making and that's the pouring of the rubber. 
what I've done is to uh, take the wooden framework off, put a, a layer of uh, cling film onto the, the base, wrapped up the individual pieces of wood in cling film again, screwed the three sections that are screwed on back on again, and the other one you can see it's clamped on, uh, but in all the joins I've also um, glued a mixture of, of uh, bit of an experiment here, so I've used hot glue in some places and I've used PVA in other places. Also because the underlying cling film was big enough, I then just lifted that up and so essentially the whole thing is a cling film bucket. So even if it leaks through the gaps of the glue and everything else, it's going to not go at least very far anyway. The master is also screwed onto the, the base. That's the hold that through, make sure that doesn't move at all. And the so the remaining jobs are going to be measure how much rubber we need, apply a mould release agent to the master, and then mix up the rubber. The rubber that I'm using is a two-part fl uh, flexible 7429, which gives some measure apparently of its flexibility two-part polyurethane rubber, room temperature vulcanisation, so you just mix the two together, pour it in and wait. That's, it's, that's my level of simple, I like that. Be conscious that this is not cheap. Uh, this combination, which is a total of probably about four litres, is about 60 quid. So if you're doing this whole process to save buying a 30 quid model, um, don't go and buy the two 30 quid models. The volume calculation is quite critical. Uh, you don't want to mix, particularly with this stopping devices, you don't want to mix up any more than you need to. So uh, the outer box, or the inside of the outer box, measures 100 centimetres, 14 and a half. Uh, I'll come back to the height in a minute. And the mould is uh, the, the master is 97 by 12. Uh, now the height of the master is 3.3 centimeters high. Uh, the so I mean don't want more than half a centimeter above that. So if I say that the outside is um, 3.84 centimeters. Uh, interestingly, they, they, because you've got quite a large area here, the difference between settling on 3.8 or 4 centimeters high is 200 cc's of that material. Uh, you know, that's like six quid's worth of material. So um, not, uh, not to be sniffed at. So we'll make that 3.8. We'll go for 3.8 because that gives a little bit of leeway. I mean, 3. 7 would be fine, you know. Uh, also allowing the fact that there's a bit of a dip here, so that's going to be, um, it'll take a little bit more rubber than would do if it was just perfectly flat. Right, so we're coming to uh, mix up the uh, the rubber. Um, I'm dressed as a mad scientist, and uh, got myself a clean bucket, which is good, because you don't really want any sort of contaminants and things in there. Um, and a uh, Throw away, but uh, measuring cylinder. Um, I'll be measuring one after the other, so it won't matter that I should use the same cylinder for both. Just to save on plastic, and uh, uh, then the the two um, components. I've given the uh, surface of the master a fairly hefty spray of uh, a silicone spray, uh, which um, acts as a, as a mould uh, release agent at least to some extent. I mean, I'm not going to be too fussed because whether this master is damaged on the way out because I'm not, I'm not going to be using it again. I'm giving it a bit of a shake as it says. Um, and I want uh, 850 cc's of these two. So, I'm going to do a 550 and a 3. Right, so we're now pretty much mixed up. Um, Trying to avoid being too vigorous on the stirring. It's got to be thorough, but you don't want too much in the way of air bubbles and things in the mixture. It'll take a, a day or so to uh, 
to set anyway, so there'll be time for the air bubbles to rise to the surface. The um, uh, you may notice there's a sort of change of lighting. That's because I've got the the main doors open really as soon as I started doing any serious or stirring. Then uh, want a lot of ventilation. With this. It's not particularly smelly, but uh, there is a warning about sort of uh, irritation to respiration and things. So now um, I've given this a coat of. Um, silicon uh, release agent and um, so it's time to pour it into the mould. Okay so this isn't going to be terribly easy to show because I've got a black rubber solution and I've got a black mould and I'm trying to show you how one pours off the other. It's just it's going to go anyway. So art is to pour slowly one, color, one corner just let it make its own way over the mould. That way it pushes the air out ahead of it and we don't end up with air bubbles in the in the mould. Right so that's everything poured. Uh, there's nothing much to do now until this is cured and tend to leave that for at least a couple of days. Uh, the only thing you may notice so if I did an extra clamp into the middle here that's to, because this is such a long length uh, the um, potential for this timber bowing out slightly just, just, just to hold the whole thing rigid and make sure that you know that, that doesn't spread. Um, I've done a bit of a sort of probe test to make sure I've got sort of two or three millimetres um, above the master on the, the top surface and that's really all I need and um, I have to wait and see now.